Okay, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit this video. I feel like I've been spending a lot of time in alternate realities lately, science fiction and comic books and such, and so I thought I'd take this opportunity to sort of poke my head back into reality for a few minutes. As you may have heard me mention before, I was a professional chef at one point in my life, and there are few things that bring me more pain than inefficient kitchen practices. So here are 10 of my favorite, truly simple kitchen and food related hacks. No, no, not that kind of a hack. Although, I suppose anything is possible. I am clumsy. This is an extremely simple trick that surprisingly few people know, but it will make some of your meal prep work so much easier. When you're slicing a tomato, say for sandwiches or burgers, a lot of people take their chef's knife and just start slicing, but after three or four slices the tomato has started to smash, it gets lopsided, the knife isn't getting through the skin very easily anymore, and you end up with weird shaped slices and a lot of juice and pulp squeezing out. So to avoid this problem, simply ditch the chef's knife, and replace it with a serrated knife, like a steak knife. The serrated teeth make short work of the skin and allow you to make a series of perfect slices without compromising the structural integrity of the tomato. Ground meat frequently comes in these little tubes or logs nowadays, and they're actually pretty convenient when it comes to storage. But one disadvantage is that not many people know how to open them neatly and cleanly to get all of the meat. Most people I've seen either cut them right in half and try to squeeze all the meat out like it's toothpaste, or they make one slit down the middle and try and push it out, but neither method really does the job very well. So here's how I do it, and it's actually kind of fun because you can pretend to be a surgeon performing complex surgery. What you're going to do is cut something like the letter I. Take a small sharp knife, make a slit here on one end, then a matching slit on the other end, and then slit it down the middle. Open up these two flaps, and then you just kind of break it in half down the middle and turn the ends inside out. See? Neat and clean, no waste of time or meat. This one is something I see a lot of people struggle with, especially at cookouts. Now, this isn't a particularly common problem, and it's not a particularly complex solution. It's just something that I think a lot of people don't put a lot of thought into. So when the problem does arise, it's not exactly a top priority, and so the solution kind of gets overlooked. But if you know this trick ahead of time, you can avoid this problem altogether. Basically, sliced cheese comes in a pretty standard size, but you don't always need a slice this big. Like if you're making sliders or appetizers, you'd only need a piece half this size. So people tend to cut this slice lengthwise and widthwise and end up with four little squares. The problem is, now you have quarter size squares, not half size squares, and you can only put them together into half size rectangles, which is not very useful. So dust off your old geometry skills and cut the slices diagonally, corner to corner. Now you have four triangles. 
Put two triangles together, hypotenuse to hypotenuse, and voila! Two more or less perfect squares that are each half the size of the original slice. Perfect for smaller applications. Sometimes you need to bake something in the oven that you know is going to release a ton of juice or grease. That's not a problem if you have baking dishes with relatively deep sides, but if you don't have one available, you can actually make one with nothing but aluminum foil. Put down a sheet of foil, fold up the two sides, then the two ends, and pinch the corners together. That's it! Now you have a temporary, oven-safe vessel that'll hold all the mess inside. This works especially well if all you have is cookie sheets like this, with no sides, because these are a little flimsy. You can put this down directly on the oven rack, but it's a lot harder to get out. This one has been making the rounds on the internet for a while, but I think it bears repeating because I still see a lot of people struggling with this simple task. Now, as a kid, I was always taught to peel bananas from the stem side by grabbing this little handle and then bending until the skin breaks. That does work most of the time, but if you use this method regularly, you have undoubtedly encountered that one stubborn banana that simply will not split open, and this part ends up turning to mush before you finally get frustrated and go for the knife. But if you want a foolproof method of opening a banana the first time every time, all you have to do is look to nature and the way that monkeys and apes do this. <laughs> okay, maybe not that monkey because he is pretty damn weird. Uh, but in general, when monkeys open bananas, they don't go for this end, they go for this end. And just as an aside, bananas do not grow this way like we often think, you know, with hanging down from the stem. They actually grow upward, this way. So uh, even though we tend to think this is the top and this is the bottom, it's actually the other way around. But I digress. Take this little end between your thumb and forefinger, give it a pinch, and you'll see it split right open. Then just grab one side and peel it. No fuss, no muss. Thank you, primate cousins. If you've ever had leftovers on a paper plate that you wanted to save for later, you may have noticed that plastic wrap just doesn't stick to paper plates very well, and it causes them to fold up and make a big mess. But if you're at a potluck or a barbecue, paper plates are likely going to be your only option for bringing food home. So what to do? Now if you think about it ahead of time, or if it's at an office function where you can go and raid the supply closet, keep a handful of these in your pocket. Binder clips. You'll need at least three per plate. Now once you've got your plate of food ready, just put a second plate on top and clamp it down with the binder clips. Neat, easy, and protected, at least well enough to survive the drive home. And if there is any plastic wrap available, put a layer of that over the food before putting the top plate on, and now it's even more protected. So this next one is one of my favorites. Now I know we're not supposed to buy drinks in these disposable plastic bottles, we're supposed to be using these reusable sports bottles. But to be honest, I've never really liked these. Uh, I've had too many of them where they get a broken seal and they leak, or the insides get full of mold or mildew and they're very difficult to clean out. Plus, for one reason or another, I always seem to end up with a bunch of these you know, disposable plastic bottles anyway, no matter what I do. So let's set aside the judgment and just get on with this hack by assuming that, like me, you have one of these disposable bottles floating around somewhere. Now one thing I dislike about these, as they are, is that if you take these to work or to school, you have to constantly, you know, take off the cap, take a sip, and put it back on. Or just leave the cap off sitting on your desk creating a potential spill hazard. And actually that problem is even worse if you're driving. Or if you take one of these to the gym, you either have to stop what you're doing in order to take a sip, which is you know, not good for your workout, or you have to drink very, very carefully while you're moving in order to avoid spilling all over yourself. And that, as much as anything else, led to my drinking problem. 
Well, I have a very simple solution to both of these problems, and all you need is a drill and a straw. So first, you're going to drill a hole the same diameter as the straw in the bottle cap, and then insert the straw. Now, slightly smaller is better. I used a quarter inch drill bit for this. You'll also need to drill a second, smaller hole to allow air to enter the bottle as the water leaves it. Otherwise, you'll create a vacuum and this won't work very well. And just like that, you have quickly converted a regular bottle into a makeshift sports bottle. And the best part is, once one bottle is empty, you can just put this cap onto a new bottle. Now it's more convenient for work, school, car, gym, or anywhere else you take it, and for a fraction of the cost of a store-bought sports bottle. So ideally, once you run dishes through the dishwasher, you empty them all out and put them away nicely. But let's be honest, do you do that? No. 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 Yes. I mean, um, I mean, no. 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 Of course you don't, and neither do I. I avoid putting the dishes away as long as possible, and I just, you know, pull clean dishes out as I need them. Frankly, I never empty out the dishwasher until it's time to move the huge pile of dirty dishes from the sink into the dishwasher. But this leads to a problem. You get into the habit of pulling dishes out of the dishwasher as you need them, but what happens if you don't look closely enough and the dishes that you pull out haven't been washed yet? That's pretty gross. So to address this issue, I went out and I got one of those printable magnetic sheets and I printed out a nice, easy to read gauge and an arrow. Now, whenever I start loading the dishwasher, I just point the arrow to dirty. And once the dishwasher is full and I start the cycle, I just move it to clean. A very simple solution to save you from a very nasty surprise. Now, I got a glimpse of a picture of this one online a couple of days ago, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to find it again, so I have no idea who first came up with this. Uh, if you know, let me know. Uh, but I just thought that this was brilliant, and I wanted to pass it along, because it is a uh, simple, elegant, and essentially free solution to a very common kitchen problem. Do you love fried foods, but hate when your hand gets continually splattered with hot oil? Just take a two-liter bottle, Cut the bottom off, and insert the handle of your fork, spatula, or slotted spoon through the neck. Instant hand guard. You could also cut off part of the neck to make the hole big enough to accommodate a pair of tongs. Just make sure you leave enough plastic to provide protection for your hands. All right, this is my last one for the day. Now, I like scrambled eggs, and my son absolutely loves them, so we make them quite a bit in this house. And it's not like they're difficult to make, but they do tend to leave a mess in the pan, and I don't really want to dirty a pan four or five times a week just for this. So just like in any infomercial, we thought to ourselves, there's got to be a better way. And it turns out, there is. As it turns out, microwave scrambled eggs are way easier, way faster, and actually delicious. In a smallish bowl, beat one or two eggs and add a splash of milk. That's important because the milk will help keep the eggs from drying out while they're cooking. Add some salt and pepper if desired, then cover tightly with plastic wrap. For one egg, cook for 60 seconds. For two eggs, 90 seconds. That's it! You can either unwrap them right away and stir them up to have nice fluffy eggs, or let them sit for a minute and the plastic wrap will shrink down and compress the eggs into a nice, perfectly sandwich-sized patty just waiting to put between two slices of toast. And you didn't have to dirty a pan. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today. I feel like if you can solve enough of life's little problems, it makes the big problems a little bit easier to live with. So hopefully I've helped you towards that end today, at least a little bit. And it didn't even cost you three easy payments of $19.95. You know what else doesn't cost you anything? Clicking those like, share, and subscribe buttons. So if you enjoyed these hacks, let me know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.